So now we have our family editor open and we're ready to create our family that is going to be an in-place family in our Revit project. Now I've already got the project open, so be aware of that. It's actually sitting behind the family editor at the moment. The good thing to do is have your project open, ready, so that you can use this icon here, load into project on your create tab in the family editor. It's always good to have that ready. The good thing is, as soon as you save this particular family, it will save it to the project folder for you as well. It knows where that project is, and what it does is it saves the families to the project folder. Very useful when you're doing things like work sharing and work sets later on, which we will cover later on in this course. So when we first started up the family editor, we used a metric column template. Now what I want to create is an extrusion. I'm going to create a steel square hollow section. So let's have a look at that and see how that works. We go up to the create tab on the ribbon and we click on extrusion. That creates a 3D solid by extruding a 2D shape, a profile. So if I hover over that, you can see you get a little video there, which is always handy. And it gives you all the information and gives you a little video on how to create a solid extrusion. Now, obviously, I'm not going to bore you with how to create a solid extrusion on there because I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. So we click on extrusion and come into the drawing area. Now, everything is grayed out. You'll notice we have the draw tools and the work plane tools if we need them. What I'm going to do is create a rectangular square hollow section. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool here in the draw panel. And just using the object snap, so I'm going to click there on that intersection and drag it across to that intersection. So there's the outside edge of my square hollow section. What I need to do now is I need to offset those lines. So I go up here now to offset. Make sure in the options bar you've got everything you need. So it's a numerical offset. I'm going to make sure that that is 35 in there and make sure that you've got copy ticked so that you keep the original lines. So I now hover over each one, click, 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 like that. There's my lines. I then need to obviously tidy up those corners, trim extend to corner there, click, click, and just work your way around each corner to make sure that the lines are nice and neatly trimmed like so. When you've done everything, you can click on the green tick here, finish edit mode, job done. So there's your extrusion in place. Now, that's in plan. You're looking down at your column at the moment. What we need to do is go into an elevation, so into the project browser, and we'll go for the back elevation for now. We'll double click there, and there we go. It's not tall enough. It's going from the lower reference level, but not up to the upper reference level. Now notice I can change these levels. If I zoom in at the moment, that is giving me a 4,000 millimeter high column. I can change that value if I want to, to say 3,000, and that will drop that upper reference level down, like so. Can you see that? However, the reference lines obviously go up to 4,000. I can change those if I want to. I can click on a reference line. I can drag that down here until I get the intersection, like so, and my reference line moves. So I can do that with all of them. That's no problem. I can just drag these down and tidy them up, like so, using the little bubbles on the end. If I hit Escape now, just to deselect, you can see that that has tidied up. I'll go back to my extrusion now, and using the blue arrow going upwards, click and drag, line that in like that. So that's a 3000 high column. So if I look at that now in my 3D view in the project browser, view one, there we go, like so, not very helpful. Up to the quick access toolbar, let's go for the default 3D view, perfect. Tells me exactly what I need to know. There's my three meter high, 600 by 600 square hollow section. What I'll do is I'll select it and go into my properties. Let's have a look, what have we got in here? Materials, by category. So if I click there, I can go and look up a material finish that I want to add to this. It takes a few seconds, it's loading them up. So there's my defaults there. Identity, default wall, default roof, glass, and so on. If I go here, I can change all the settings, the appearance, and so on. Now, I don't actually have any materials loaded up, but I could load up steel, for example, and make it a steel hollow section. Just hit escape there to deselect it. So that family is now done. I have a three meter high square hollow section, 600 by 600. So I go to the application menu here, and I do a save as, and I want to save it as a family. 
Now, it'll give me a default name, which is family three, not very descriptive. So what we'll do is we'll call it a UK underscore 600 SHS, and then I'll put an underscore again because it's a 35 millimeter thickness like that. So we now know that that's a 600 square hollow section, a UK metric, and it's a 35 millimeter thick wall. Now, sometimes what they tend to do is with the name, they'll put 600 by 35 and then SHS. It depends on your project specification and obviously standards and requirements for that particular project. So I'll save that now. That is now saved and you'll see the name change at the top in the family editor there. So now I want to load this into my existing project. So I click on load. Now, sometimes what you may find is this might be hidden. So I'm just going to place that, roughly speaking, there. I'm not going to place it very neatly. And then I'll hit escape just to deselect and zoom in. So there's my square hollow section. And you can see there, look, columns, UK, 600 by 35 SHS. So it's given me the name of the family there. There's only the one. I haven't got any different elements to it. It's just a one-off and it's in place in my project. But that's how you place a new Revit family into your Revit Structure project.